Oh, this is nice. Look at this. We got Manfreda longiflora, one of the coolest Manfreda species. Manfreda is a, a genus that's kind of nested within agave. I mean, it comes out on the cladogram, but you got a few agave species to the top of it, and then the rest of the agave species, the 300 species below. The ones up top on the cladogram on the evolutionary tree look different enough to be classified technically into their own genus. It's the agave striata group. Bracteos is in there too, but you know, they, someone was trying to lump this. I don't believe in lumping, I believe in splitting. It's better for telling the evolutionary story. It doesn't deserve to be an agave. Totally different habit. Regardless, look at those goddamn leaves. Look at that, look at it, with the nice, look at those nice, the speckling, you got the teeth, almost looks like a fucking weird Haworthia. And even cooler, it's in fruit. So we're gonna collect seed and grow the shit out of it. The seeds, of course, like so many members of the Asparagales order, except for the orchids, uh, have that black, phytomelanin in the seed coat. See, they're just like yuccas, just like agave seeds, just like a lot of amaryllids, etc. So, uh, yeah, we're going to collect a shit ton, grow a shit ton, establish an ex situ population, especially because uh, this whole lot is for sale and it's probably going to be turned into some hideous shit. You know, everybody, everybody's trying to get theirs, right? Especially down here, that's what they're doing right now. They're just, they're, they're just you know, selling, dividing the land up into parcels, selling it for tract housing, and I seem completely oblivious to the fact that there's not even going to be any water here in 10 years. It's going to be, it's, we're going the direction of Phoenix. So uh, anyway, look at all the uh, Manfredo Longa flora right there. Look at that. And a bunch of it growing, as so many plants do, beneath a nurse plant. Beneath the shade of a nurse plant, in this case, Cremaria ramosissima with those tiny green leaves. Cremaria is not flowering. Really bizarre pink orchid-like flowers when it does. Got a Kinoceris fichii under there. You got Forest the Era of the Olive family up there with those. Oh, that's some fruit too. We're going to collect the shit out of that and grow the shit out of that as well. Oleaceae, the Olive family. Obviously, uh, bird dispersed fruits. But this is really, this is one of the richest populations of Manfredo Longiflora I've ever seen. I can't believe there's not more people, you know, more to cactus nerds and succulent people growing this. Uh, I guess it's somewhat obvious. But anyway, these. These uh, leaves, of course, are herbaceous. They'll die back to that uh, that corm, that fleshy root. Oh, nice desert termite uh, mound. I've got to thank those guys for the you know the turnover of uh, all the dead veg. But look at that! Look at that! If you live in South Texas, you got to be growing Manfredo longiflora. It's such a cool plant, and uh, the flowers are incredible when they're going off. They look like lily flowers. Anyway, God, those leaves! Look at those leaves! God damn it! can't get over how many of these Manfredas there are. Look at it, see? All, all beneath this uh, Cremary. Oh, I gotta get these some more some fruits right there. And all this is gonna be destroyed whenever this gets sold, you know? Some Fraser's gonna build a fucking housing development or a gas station. As if, we, as if we need another Stripes, right? Already got 15. I bet you see a fucking billboard for a personal injury attorney here, just like you see all through the rest of the valley. But anyway, I had no idea how many Manfredas they were here. We were here a few months ago. There were only a few up, but the rain that we got brought all the leaves up to the surface. I mean, there's got to be easily a hundred fucking plants right here of this incredible species. Look at how long the leaves are in that one, too. I'm going to grow to shit. Anyway, here's that uh, forest, the area. In Gustafoya, there's those fruits. Ooh, squishy. You know how many seeds inside? One. Anyway, uh, because it's in the olive family, Oleaceae, which is in Lamiales, the order, uh, you know, 95% of the plants in that sage order, Lamiales, uh, have opposite leaves. You can see right there. So you got fascicled leaves like so many other plants in this harsh desert environment, no petioles, but the leaves are opposite each other. You can see there's a node. These leaves fell off or were eaten by something, but you still you can see the node has uh, fascicles on each side. So there you go. There we go, Amorexia ridei, family Bixaceae, order Malvales. Bixaceae, it's fucking weird. You got more members in South America, too. That's a really weird one. It used to be, I think it's Coclospermum now. But uh, anyway, you know, all the fucking Manfredi right here. Look at that. It just blows my mind how underappreciated this fucking landscape is, but I'm going to change that. We all can change it. Help me change it. We'll do it together. You get people stoked on this and how unique this floor. Oh, look, it's a dog choya. Oh, you mean fuck. I love you. You're like the angry grandpa nobody wants at Thanksgiving dinner, but, you know, we still love you. You get a nice bloom when you go up. Look, there's a kind of serious fitchy eye. And this plant 
of course, it's a cactus. This cactus needs full sun. You can look at that. It's created a little shade screen with those, those spines. So obviously it's, you know, it's reducing the amount of sunlight and UV that gets into that epidermal tissue below. So you know that's going to be a full sun-loving bastard. But gr again, growing on these, these muddy soils. All that black stuff is lichen. Got a nice thymophila. Got that said polygalaceae. I always forget the genus. It's been changed twice. There's a Nostoc commune, of course. Cyanobacterial film, photosynthetic bacteria. Looks like someone, looks like dried puke, kind of. Like someone ate like a bunch of dates or something and then puked. I don't know. And I never care about liverworts. At least I didn't until I saw this guy. Because I saw it growing with peyote, growing St. Patrick with peyote. It's a species in the genus Richia. See that? Look at that color on it. Can completely dry out. It's poikilohydric. No vascular system, like all liverworts. No internal plumbing. Spreads by spores. Early branching lineage of plant. So one of you know a, a earlier one of the earlier branches that came off that evolutionary tree 400 million years ago. What the fuck? Plant life come out Silurian, roughly 440 million years ago. Maybe a little bit earlier. Those leaves right there. Those toothy things it's a cordia runcinata really cool asteraceae with a pink flower ah i get so stuck the dopamine is running through me i get dopamine just coming out looking at the shit growing out here looking at these plants little shots of dopamine flooding into my brain as i look at all these guys god damn look at that escobaria you got a nice ibervillia lindheimeri back there cucurbitaceae forms a giant gourd in the ground got our uh Old friend, uh, buffalo grass again. It's got that kind of like plumose inflorescence. Buffalo grass and guinea grass are two really bad ones down here. Bad invasive grasses intentionally spread by the ranchers. They have checks and balances. Mostly insects that keep them in check where they're native. Those insects uh, aren't here, of course. Look at the gravels, too. Look at that. There you go. 60 million year old uh, oyster shell. I forget the genus name. I'll put it in the comments if I can remember it. God damn it. Such cool habitat. Look at that conspicuous Ibervillia lindheimeri fruit. Bright red cucumber. It's just a little bright red cucumber trying to get noticed by a bird. The, the fucking fruit smell terrible. But then those seeds, of course, will get dispersed. And Such a cool habit. They got that big caudex they form in the ground. Anyway, here's a cool one. Cool mustard, Synthlipsis gregii. Only seen it once or twice before. Uh, it was uh, kind of somewhat nearby on the on the bluffs above the river. It's got that uh, flat fruit. It can easily be confused with uh, Nerysirenia camporum, another much more common but more chalky blue-leaved brassica that you get in West Texas. One of the dominant mustards out there. Nerysirenia camporum needs to be respected. If you live in West Texas, you got to know that plant. Really cool mustard, super drought tolerant. Synthlipsis, obviously. Well, Nerysirenia has a long. That fruit will be a long little uh, silic, which is just the term for a. a you know, specific kind of fruit uh, in the brassica family, the mustard family. But uh, Synthlipsis, uh, Synthlipsis has a flat little uh, flat little fruit, whereas the Nerysirene is, you know, super elongated. And then, of course, there's other differences too, but that's the, the easiest one. Flowers smell divine. Of course, you got typical uh, numerology of the, uh, the brassica family. Petals of four, uh, stamens of six, sepals of four, etc. And what the shit. And then, of course, the anthers have a very specific look to them looking like a little banana or a half moon uh attached at the base anyway there you go synth lips is kind of a rare mustard god look how bad the buffalo is look at how bad that fucking buffalo is oh it's brutal just spray it all so anyway we got my old friend tasahio one of the meanest choyas also one of the sluttiest choyas uh, i learned from my friend uh michelle cloud hughes who studies these actually this this species hybridizes with everything it's got those conspicuous red fruits looks like a christmas cactus a really mean one you ever ruined christmas before anyway and growing within it is a passion flower passiflora tenua lobo did you know that passion fruit will grow uh, there's a species of passion i mean it's a huge fucking genus but there's a species of passion fruit that will grow uh st patrick with peyote in the uh peyote gardens here in south texas did you know that you got that corona, all those appendages, uh, you know, going around. Oh, what's going in there? A little ant. You got that corona, all those little appendages 
going uh, around the uh, circumference of the flower. And then you got that uh, androgynophore, it's called. You got an ovary, that green thing with the three little antenna looking things coming off it. Those are just the styles and stigmas. And then uh, the ovary is actually on top of the same column that holds the five anthers, which are those little things that look like purple brake pads with green tops. And at the uh, flower structure, you know that flower structure, then you know passive floor. You know the genus passive floor. You could be anywhere. You could be in a cloud forest of Columbia, the deserts of South Texas, or, uh, you know, a Virginia woodland looking at a species of passive flora, and, uh, and you would know it. Because only passion flowers have that specific flower morphology. So uh, that's a synapomorphy to genus passive flora. And then, of course, the, the fruit is like a little, little berry when it matures. It doesn't actually look like a passion flower. Look at those leaves. Even the leaves are pretty, though. Well, anyway, right here, you can kind of get a window into the past, a glimpse into the past, also a nice glimpse of Louis' tail. Uh, you can get a glimpse into the past of what the landscape looked like before the buffalo grass invaded. And again, that buffalo grass was intentionally seeded by ranchers for forage, despite us having plenty of native species of grass that would serve just as well, uh, because, uh, you know, they, they ranchers just... They, you know, no one realized, no one cared, no one realized what it would do to the landscape. So that smothered all of this. And eventually, that'll be here smothering all this stuff, choking it out. That'll take all the light, all the water, and all this shit will be gone. All these cool plants that, if, if, you know, have evolved in one of the harshest climates in North America, if not the world, because of how hot it gets down here, will be gone. Tassahia will be gone, that cool little desert passion flower will be gone, it'll all be smothered by that. And maybe in 500,000 years, Maybe a million. Who knows how long it takes? Because nature doesn't, you know, let anything form a monoculture. Something will eventually evolve, an insect or a fungal pathogen, to keep the buffalo grass in check. But in between now and then, how much of this stuff will be extirpated or even made extinct? That's the big thing. All right? Shifting baselines. All right? Future generations will think that shit is normal. That's not normal. This is what was normal for thousands, hundreds of thousands, even maybe millions of years. You know, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to miss the Grusonia. I'll miss the Grusonia a little bit, actually. I'll miss you. I, I, I'll be honest.